Well, it's Dr. Triple O Seven, and in today's video, I'll be continuing on with the Learning to Code in Java series with episode number two. And in this episode, we're gonna actually gonna be doing some coding. So in the last video, you guys had some great feedback and really wanted to see this series continue on. So um, today we'll be continuing on with that series. And in today's video, we're making a simple program that can take in, a, take in two numbers and add them together and then tell the user what the result is. So with no further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do is open up uh, NetBeans or Eclipse or whatever program you decided to download in the first episode. What you want to do is go to File New. And now we're going to create a new Java project. So uh, click Java and then click Java Application and click Next. And now we're going to give it a name and you can also choose its project location if you, needed to, if you need to. So I'm just gonna name it example one. Now when I complete, it looks, should look something similar to this. You may have some comments um, listed throughout there and a comment is essentially a code of, a block of code that is not run. And in Java, there are many ways to do comments, but the one that you'll probably see right off the bat is two backslashes and you can tell because the words are kind of grayed out and they basically mean anything right there is not run. So you can write plain English uh, in your code. It's great for commenting things out if you don't understand what you're doing or if you need to help someone else out, whatever it may be, you can write actual words to explain things. So what you wanna do is just delete all the comments and basically make your code look identical to mine. The only way it won't be identical is if you didn't name your project example one, then whatever you named it will be here and here. Now this is the starter file for example one.java. Now if for some reason your Java file didn't open or you back and close it to open it, all you have to do is go over to example one or the name of your project, click the arrow, click under source packages, click under example one, and then open up example one.java. So like I mentioned, these are the this is the starter file. Uh, currently, if we were to run this program, it would print nothing down here because nothing actually happens. So down here is where our code will actually show up. So now we'll go ahead and start coding. So like I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and create a simple program that asks for two numbers and adds them together. So the first thing we're gonna do is get input from the user. And the best way to do that is using the scanner method. So let's get typing. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a scanner object. So to do that, we'll type in scanner input equals new scanner system.in. Now every single Java block of code must end with a semicolon. You'll notice that I had no, I had a huge line of error. As soon as I enter in a semicolon, it gets rid of most of the errors. Now you're gonna notice we still have an error. So if we go ahead over here and click the little uh, light bulb, it's gonna tell us, well, you don't have the import. So basically what scanner is, is it's a pre-made um, method to get inputs. Um, we'll learn more about methods later, this is a pre-made one that's built into Java, but in order to access it, we must actually import it. So to import a pre-made class like that, uh, the easiest way, honestly, is just to click here and click add import. And it will automatically add the import for java.util scanner. Now, of course, you can type that there as well, but if you click add, it will automatically do it for you. And there you go, you notice now we have no, add or no um, errors. So now if I run our program again, nothing happens because this lab code, code imports it, but doesn't actually do anything with it. So now it's time to actually print something out. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask the user for a number. So we'll scroll down a little bit. Now to print something into the console in Java, there's a th we use system.out.print. So we'll go ahead and type that. Now, if you type along, you'll notice that this is a suggestion menu, and it'll help you out a lot when you know trying to type out code. 
Now you'll notice I said print, and there's a lot of prints, print F, print line, and they all have different functions. Print essentially just prints whatever it is on the current line. Print a line will always go down a line in print. So this is good if you're doing like a paragraph or something like that. And print F is a format string, which is my personal favorite because it has a lot more functionality. But for this line of code, we'll just use print. And now what you can do with print is you can enter in a variable, which we'll talk about in a second, and it will print the value of that variable. But since we're just printing a line of text, we'll delete what's currently in there, put some quotes, and we'll write in our own sentence. So we'll enter, we'll type in enter a number. So now our program is going to print out a line saying enter a number. So if you go ahead and run our program now, you'll see it says enter a number. But unfortunately, that's all it does. So now what we have to do is we have to tell it to get a number from the user. Now, before we do that, we have to get a number from the user and we have to assign it to a variable. Now in Java, you have to declare variables. And what this basically means is you have to create a variable um, before you can use it. So there are different kinds of variables and I'll have a link in the description below to talk more about all the kinds of variables and we'll use more and more of them as our series goes on. But today, we're using only ints. And int is basically an integer, which is any whole number. So to create a whole number variable, we'll type in the word int and then a name. So I'll just do number. Now, number is the name of the variable, and that's how we'll refer to it late as we go on. Now we could totally change that word number to something else and it would still perfectly work as long as you rename it everywhere else as well. So now we've created a blank number file. You'll notice that it is um, squiggly and that is because NetBeans is saying, well, you're not using this variable and it's basically telling me to delete it because it is taking up unnecessary space. But we will be using it so that it will go away. So now we're gonna get a number from the user and assign it to that number variable. So to do that, what we'll do is we're going to call it again. So we'll put number equals input dot next int. And so what this is basically doing is it's taking a number, sorry, it's taking the input. So the next integer entered, which will be from the user. And whatever they type in is going to make number equal that. So if they, if they enter five, after that line of code is run, number will equal five. Okay, so now what we'll do is we will write a print statement to see how far we've gotten. So we'll do the same things we did before, system.out.print. But this time we'll use print line just to change it up. Now in the brackets, we will have to enter the variable. So we'll enter the variable, we'll enter number. And what this will do is this will simply print the number variable. So now we'll go ahead and run our program. So run our program. Let's say enter a number. So make sure you click down here because by default, NetBeans will stay focused up here. So make sure you click down here. So your cursor is down there and we'll enter a number. So enter five and press enter and you'll see five is printed again. This is because it has, it prints out the value of the number. So now we know our program is working and it's properly saving the variables. So now we'll go ahead and delete this line of code. And now what we'll do is we're just going to repeat the process again. So we'll have to create another variable so we can call it int number one. And now we're going to do the same thing again. So we'll, Basically just copy this code and paste it again. Make sure to change number to number one. Otherwise you will override the other one. Okay, so now we're gonna do some simple math. So basically what we have here now is you have a simple program that's gonna ask for two numbers and save each one of those numbers into a different variable. So now what we'll do is we'll do some math. And math in Java is extremely easy since computers are essentially calculators. Um, what we'll do is we're gonna add the two numbers together. So what we need to do is we need to create a third number or a third variable. Now, of course you could override the one of the two, 
but today we're just going to create a new one and take the two of them and put them together into a new one just to practice creating variables. So what we'll do is we'll create another int and we'll name this int together. So now we've created a variable called together. And what we'll do is we'll take these two numbers and we're going to add them up to equal together. So now what we'll do is we'll go together equals. So we're assigning the equals in Java basically means assign or assigns or it means basically means equal in math as well. So it's going to, it's going to equal number plus number one. So this is going to do is together is going to is going to equal what number and number one added together is. And finally, the last thing we're going to do is print out our uh, statement telling the user what it is, what the together equals. So now we'll try out a new version of printing and we'll use printf. So system dot out. Print F, enter, and now what we'll do is print how print F works is essentially you write out a, a sentence and then you throw in the variables at the end. So I'll show you guys what I mean. So what I wrote here, I'll explain what I wrote here. So print F allows you to basically write a sentence and then fill it in. So percentage sign D plus percentage times D equals percentage times D. So what I wrote here was percentage times D plus percentage sign D plus percentage sign D or equals percentage times D. So basically what it means is um, percentage times D is a placeholder for a variable. Now there are different ones and D is the value for integer and we'll cover the other ones later. And now what I'm gonna do is on the other side, I'll end the quotes and I'll do comma and then I'll enter in the three so since I have three of them, the three value variables that will replace them. So, um, and how it corresponds is first, second, and third. So this one here, the first uh, placeholder will equal number. The second placeholder will equal number one. And the final one will equal together. So now it's time to go test out our program. So press run at the top. So enter a number. So we'll do five. Enter another number, we'll do five again. Five plus five equals 10. So there you go, our program is working. And I'll show you guys one little thing too. Um, if you wanna create a new line um, in a system print, all you gotta do is forward slash N. And we'll run it again, I'll show you guys what the difference is. So this time the build uh, message shows up, shows up on a new line. So there you go, guys. That is our first actual program. And uh, you're gonna, some of you guys might ask, well, it doesn't have like an actual interface. What's this popping down here? Creating an actual user interface is a whole nother thing and is a very complicated process. And uh, today, in this series at least, we'll be focusing on the more of the back end side of it and actual coding, um, writing the actual code, and less of the graphical stuff. So that is pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. Uh, I'll go one more over time, or over one more time, uh, exactly what we did today. And uh, so I'll do that right now. So the first thing we did was we inputted a scanner object, and we named it input. This is a variable as well, so we could have named it something else, but we would have to replace it here as well. We then created our three integer variables. Well, an integer is a whole number, so if, let's say you would enter in, if I was to enter in 5.5, it would immediately crash the program um, because an integer cannot be a, a decimal number. It has to be a whole number. So uh, that is what an integer is. But like I mentioned earlier, there are different kinds. We could have did it a string and it would uh, work for certain parts of the code, but it would crash other parts because string is traditionally meant for um, words, but can accept uh, numbers. But we will cover more about uh, different data types later on and i will have a link in the description below if you want to read up, on, read up on them as well we then printed out a simple statement asking for a number and then we told it that number equaled the next integer entered so number right here entered equaled the next integer that was being entered 
And then we did the same thing again. We print, we asked them for another number and we told them that number one. So the second variable that we created is equal to the next integer. So basically the next number that entered. And then we did some simple math. So we did together equals number plus number one. So we said this final variable here is going to equal these two added together. And then finally, we did our last print statement, system.printf, and we did a placeholder plus placeholder equals placeholder back and then new line. And then we threw in our variables. So number, number one, and then together. The result of the program is a simple addition application. So you guys did enjoy this tutorial. Uh, this is my first time really teaching Java. So if you guys are having suggestions, uh, please leave them below. If I went too fast or too slow, or didn't explain things well enough. Um, this is definitely the kind of series I want to make sure you guys completely understand what's going on. So if you have any questions, let me know. And of course, Google is your friend. So if you ever have any issues, Google stuff, I'm always Googling stuff. Um, if you want to learn more data types, Google them. Um, but like I said, ask questions if you guys need to know anything. And uh, this is the kind of program that, so from here on though, you can actually go and practice some more things. So uh, my suggestion to you, if you want to practice some more, you should try and write this from scratch. Don't like look at the video, um, and then try out some other things. Like don't add, don't 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 do, don't do just mal adding. So you can change this addition sign to like subtract, and now it subtracts. And if you change it to multiplication, and then oops, if you change it to the multiplication sign, it will now multiply. And if you change it to the backslash, it will now divide. So these are some things you can do to play around with. And uh, yeah, guys, and if you want to make it even more complicated, you could add multiple print statements um, or add multiple features like, you know, choosing between division, all kinds of stuff. So guys, that is it for the first episode of the video series. I hope you guys liked it. Um, let me know what you guys think of it. Uh, like I said, it's the first time I've ever teach Java really. So kind of need to know what you guys thought of it. Um, anyways, guys, that is it. Uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. This is the Hacker 0007, and I'm signing off.